welcome to this week's video. Um, as you can see, I'm sort of sat out in the countryside for this one this week. The reason for being here this week is actually I would normally do something like this from my back garden because that's the ideal place and you'll see later why it's the ideal place to do something like this. Uh, unfortunately, because we're near, near a major road, it just ruins the audio. So I always sort of come away um, from there and would prefer to record somewhere like this where I mean you probably still hear the road in the background but anyway to this week's video I'm really excited this week about this video for a number of reasons firstly it's come about because I've had quite a few questions on both my YouTube channel and through my website um, and on Instagram and things like that when people have seen my image of, and images and the one of the things a lot of people say is, you know, I'd love to do some wildlife photography, I'd love to take images like that, but I just, you know, it's just, it costs so much money for the kit. So that got me thinking, when I first started wildlife photography nearly 20 years ago, um, I started with a really basic kit and I was still able to get some stunning wildlife images or, or what I think are, you know, are stunning images. Um, so I thought, well, what's changed? And really nothing's changed other than, I think, the perception that people have. So what I want to do is, throughout 2021, I've decided to do a series on wildlife photography, but really stripping it back to help people who just want to start out in the hobby. And hopefully by doing that, people will be able to pick up some tips um, and progress their photography. So at some point, you know they might be able to look to upgrade their kit to something else if they enjoy the hobby and they're getting good results um, so hopefully that's what I'm gonna do um, as I say this this is a series that's gonna run throughout 2021 and it's just designed for people who want to start in wildlife photography thought it was too expensive and hopefully this series will prove to you that it's not um, if people want to keep in touch with the series then please subscribe to the channel and you'll get notified if you click on the bell when a new video is uploaded. It will run alongside the other stuff that I do as well so um, you know just keep your eye out for that. And yeah join me for this, um, this 2021 quest. Right so I think probably we need to address the main issue that people have with wildlife photography and getting started in it and that's equipment. So if we look at what I use currently um, this is a Sony a6400 which I don't know probably about 800 quid for that there's a Metabones adapter that's that one cost me 160 but that's second hand and there's a uh, Tamron 15600G2 which is about 1100 quid or 1200 quid something like that um, so not a cheap setup probably about 2000 pound around that I have to say in wildlife photography terms that's quite a budget setup should we say and people see that and they think there's no way I'm going to be able to afford that um, and as I say you know you can spend 15 20 thousand pound on a, a lens and a camera set up for wildlife so um, in a way as I say that's quite budget but I wanted to do this series and looking back to when I first started I didn't spend that amount of money on kit not even that amount of money either I started with a what we would call an entry-level camera and a a zoom lens which I think might have been 75 300 or it was 70 300 something like that so what I've done I've bought some new equipment and I'll I'll show it to you now so you're impressed aren't you this is a Nikon D3 200 circa 2014 I think it's a 24 megapixel sensor and it shoots four frames a second maximum and I've paired it up with a Tamron 70 to 300 uh, it's got image stabilization the reason I've gone for this is twofold I gave myself a budget of 300 quid because in my thinking there's no point me coming to you and saying I'm going to do a series to help new photographers get into wildlife photography and then turn up with a £2,000 set up a kit and say oh look how easy it is um, it just wouldn't seem right to me so as I say 300 quid 
probably your setup if you're just setting out in wildlife photography you may have got yourself a camera similar to this perhaps a bit newer than this one actually um, and you might be looking for a lens that you can do a bit of wildlife on as I say I think this one cost me about 130 quid um, so if, obviously if I start getting some good images with this then that's the sort of thing you want to look for so yeah that's the kit the other reason I, I've gone for something like this is actually it's a little bit selfish on my part when I do um, when we're allowed to do workshops and one-to-one -one courses I often find that a lot of people in fact a dis disproportionate amount of people seem to use Nikon kit um, a lot of people use Nikon kit I don't I mean there's nothing wrong with Nikon don't get me wrong it's just that I would have thought there'd be at least as many Canon users but there tends to be loads more Nikon than anything else I haven't used Nikon since for about eight years now so when I'm doing a one-to-one -one or a workshop it's often it'll be to my advantage to keep my hand in by using something like this because it's just simple things like you know taking a lens on and off when you take a Canon lens off you twist it in the opposite direction to Nikon everything seems to be the opposite way around um, so yeah that will help me out a little bit so anyway that's the kit I'm going to be using hopefully by using this you can follow the series along do um, what I'm doing and hopefully you'll see from that that you know you can take stunning wildlife images on quite um, entry-level kit so why don't I think that you need a expensive setup to do wildlife photography well it always helps obviously if you can afford you know more than the 300 quid to get yourself started in wildlife photography yeah it's going to be a little bit easier what I would say is what what tends to happen is if you're a photographer who's started with a basic kit and built it up over the years what you'll do is you'll use your other skills to bring your level up so for me when I first started much more important was my field craft and you know knowing the habits of animals and learning all about the animals I was after and you know my tracking skills and my um, stalking skills because if I've got a 300mm lens and I'm stalking deer to get a frame filling shot I've got to know how to get close to those deer without spooking them whereas if I've got a 600mm lens I can stay twice as far away probably shoot them from the car now you know for me what happens is if you go straight to an expensive setup do you really need to use those skills maybe you don't you know so and if you don't develop those skills when you get onto an animal that's particularly difficult you'll probably never get a shot because those skills that you use and develop on the animals that you've got around your home the deer the the foxes the badgers those skills that you learn will transfer up to other things as well and uh, you know I can't stress enough that the equipment is like 10% that's 10% to getting a shot in a what as a wildlife photographer 90% um, is is you know doing those other things well and you know sure you can go to places where people have done all that work for you and they've set up a hide and you can sit in a hide and they'll put something out and the thing will turn up on you now on time you can probably say yeah get there for four it'll be there at quarter past <sighs> that just loses so much for me as a wildlife photographer if I've done all the research put all the work in and then it all comes together and I get that shot and believe you me there's a lot of times when you don't get that shot that just makes that image so much more special for me and um, yeah it's it's something that I wouldn't want to lose anyway so yeah what when we talk about equipment and I say it's only 10% the, all the other stuff is the important stuff and if you learn that when you step up and get better equipment you it'll just you'll just find it makes your life easier um, so what I'm hoping to get out of this series myself is that I think you do get comfortable when you step up your gear um, you you start to lean on your equipment a little bit more 
and you you don't lose those skills but it's like riding a bike you never forget them but you tend to get a little bit lazy if you like so I'll, I'm, I'm hoping that you know I'm going to be hitting the deck a little bit earlier I'm going to be a little bit more alert when I'm out walking I'm, I'm just going to heighten all my senses because I know I've got to to get a shot um, you know I've got to be really on the ball and attentive so I'm hoping that that improves again for me um, and just gives me a little reminder that you know um, how it used to be and hopefully as I say you'll pick all these things up and then when you step up your equipment you'll find that actually yeah this is this is you know I really love this right something else that a lot of people ask me about and uh, is the settings that I use for wildlife now again this is a very personal thing what I would say to you is the settings that I've used for 20 years is probably aperture priority for 90% of the time manual 10% of the time I'm not saying that's right I'm just saying that that works for me and uh, the reason I use aperture priority and I watched a video recently where somebody said there's no point in using aperture priority because for wildlife you're shooting wide open all the time so why would you need to mess around with your aperture just set it at, at wide open and, and you know away you go um, for me that's a load of rubbish to be fair <laughs> It's true that you do shoot a lot of wildlife at dawn and dusk, so you are always struggling to get enough light in the camera. But there's a couple of issues really. One, every camera has a, a sweet spot. So I know for that um, Tamron 15600 that it shoots very, very sharp at f7.1 and f8. It's sharp at f6.3, which is wide open at 600mm, but this sharp and this sharp you'll find that and uh, although it's, I'm not going to say oh yeah it's all blurry at f6.3 it's it, the sharpness at f7.1 is just bang on and I've only you know from using the camera that's and the lens that's how you you over time you find that it's got that little sweet spot that you need to aim for that's one point and the other point is if I'm shooting an owl sat on a post um, and I'm shooting at f6.3 or if I've got a, a, a more expensive lens and I'm shooting at f4 or whatever I know that that owl is going to be you know its, it's eyes going to be in focus and its beaks going to be in focus because it's got a flat face it's, it's flat um, if I try and do that with a roe deer looking at me head-on and I've got the eye in focus which you should always have there's a good chance at f4 that the nose is going to be out of focus which looks absolutely awful so you'd have to stop the lens down to f6.3 or f7.1 so you know it's rubbish to say that you always shoot wide open you don't but aperture priority works for me and what I like to do is I'm constantly fiddling with settings as it gets lighter so I'm trying to get to that f7.1 as quickly as I can because I know that's when it's at its sharpest but I know and, and when you're talking about shutter speeds, you know, it, that again varies greatly. So, especially these days with image sta stabilization and the way you're set up. So, if your hand holding stood up, you might only be able to shoot at 1125 of a second um, and get a steady shot, even with image stabilization with a big lens, or 1160th of a shot, or 1200th of a second. But if you're laid on the floor and you, you've got your elbows, it might be a lot more stable and you might be able to get down to a slow shutter speed. And more still, if you're on a beanbag laid on the floor, you might be able to shoot at a 60th of a second. So it's really, and, and what I find is when I'm shooting early in the morning, I'm, I'm, if I've got a chance, I'm changing all those settings all the time because I know that you know, I might be able to take one, I might be able to get to that f7.1 and shoot at a slower shutter speed and still get the shot um, because of the position that I'm in, but that only comes with experience. And I know a lot of people shoot completely manual, I know a lot of people shoot um, by locking the, letting the camera sort the ISO out, so they'll know where a, an image, um, a camera's ISO starts to get too grainy to make it a picture that, you know, is a bit unusable. They'll lock it at ISO 3200 uh, down to 100 and they'll let the camera sort that out and that's fine. So what I'm saying is it's whatever works for you. 
take your camera away, look at a couple of YouTube videos, try different things out and find what works with you, for you. And then if you're enjoying shooting like that and getting used to it, then stick with it and you'll find that, you know, it becomes second nature if you like. So that's how I would say, I shoot aperture priority. Um, and you know, I'm happy with the results, so that's what I'm gonna stick with. Right, so where do you start in wildlife photography? Well, to be honest, that's as why I, I would have liked to record this video on the on the garden, because what I'm gonna to suggest to you is if you've got a setup like this, the first thing to do is to shoot garden birds. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that if you're just getting used to your camera, what you want is as much control as you can have. So what I mean by that is if you're shooting on your back garden and I actually did a, vi a video on this um, last year I think it was where I set up a, a garden bird feeding station so if you want to look at that you can look at that up, up here. Um, but you have all the control so you're bringing the animals to you. You can bring them to exactly where you want them to because they'll go to the feeder and you can put your hide up and that hide can be there all the time and when i say hide i don't mean buying a proper hide it can be anything it can be a shed simple things like if you think about it if you've got a shed that backs onto your lawn that faces onto your lawn and you're putting your perches up and your bird feeder on your lawn and your door faces towards it you can't have your door open all the time because you've got all your stuff in there that could, would go missing but what you can do is Lock your, lock your shed door, hang some scrim netting over it and then put a, a black plant pot, this is why black plant pots that look like the end of that lens cover stick that to the outside of the door, leave it there all the time then when you want to go out and shoot the birds lift the scrim netting up, take the, the plant pot off open your door fully, drop the scrim net back down over where the door was as you get inside and then put your lens through perhaps put another load of scrim netting over just to make it so you can't be seen inside and to the birds that's more or less exactly the same as they saw it the day before you know nothing's changed so they'll be used to it so there'll be nothing to stop them coming to those perches and that food you can control all that on your back garden so you know it can be there all the time you can set everything up as you want it you can set your background up as you want it so over the next video what I'm going to show you is I'm going to set up a, a feeder here today um, because this year one of the things I wanted to do as well was move my, some feeders away from my back garden because I wanted to see if I could get any other species of bird in so I've moved to this area around the river and hopefully I'm going to get some different species I may not, may not work but it just does allow me to set some feeders up here and hopefully um, you know we'll get some other stuff coming in so anyway I'm gonna set some feeders up here now and I'll get back to you after I've done it Hopefully the sun's not too bright from this um, angle. It's actually getting to quite late in the afternoon now for this time of year, uh, so the sun's quite low. What, you, what I've done, I've put the feeder here uh, on this pole, and just a couple of feeders. I don't want too many feeders here because I don't want too many perches. And the reason for that is when I get the birds coming in, it'll be pretty soon before there's birds sat on these perches and there's no room for the birds that want to get to the feeders and what they'll do then hopefully is come and perch on this log here that I've put in as you can see, hopefully you can see this is a nice green uh, lichen log, it's quite attractive and what I want to do is get them perched on here now where I've set this up is I've got the river here and I've got some, I've got the river here and I've got some um, willows behind me and there's a small wood there's a small wood on the side of the trent here this is where obviously the birds are going to come from and they'll have some safety there and obviously they'll come across to here hopefully land on the feeders queue up to get on the feeders on here and that's where I'll be taking my shots what you don't want is to take them on the feeders so we're taking it from that shot where you know people set feeders up in the garden and they'll take feed pictures of birds on the feeders 
and yeah it's a nice picture of a bird but you really want it in a natural environment so by getting something like this and you don't have to have a, something this big if you're on your garden you can have a simple metal pole and just clamp some twigs onto it that you want them to land on them some nice attractive twigs but this is what I'm going to start with so this is the one I'm going to start with I might take this out at some point and put something different in when we look at the background what I've done here I've cleared some of the the old nettle stalks brown nettle stalks out the back because I don't want them directly behind this stump because then you'll have lines at the back and obviously I don't want them in front either either so I've cleared a section away but I do want them further behind because it creates a nice sort of grey brown background and quite smooth if they're far enough away that's something you can set all this up before you even get a bird on here you can just look what it looks like take some practice shots of, of this piece of wood here and see what the background look like, looks like and if there's anything distracting take it out of the way so anyway that's really we get, it's been laid down in the frost so it's covered in bits of grass take some of that off so we don't want that in the image a bit of gardening bit of gardening so that's really all I wanted to cover this week next time you come to me hopefully this will be up and running we'll get some birds coming to it hide wise I'm going to come up with my chair hide probably and what I've done I've actually sat in a chair across there and took a couple of practice shots as I said just to see what this looks like and what the background looks like um, what I may have to do here is um, if you look at my video and I'll put a link up there on building a fake hide that might be useful for you to look at if you're thinking of doing something like this away from home because obviously here I can't leave a hide here or otherwise it'll go missing if I leave it here long term so what I may do is build something hide shaped out of stuff that I find in the natural environment so logs and things something that I can leave there and then if somebody breaks it down it doesn't really matter I've not lost anything only my time but I can stick my hide inside it or actually get inside it on a chair and throw some scrim over it and then you know the birds have already used to something being there so yeah I'll put a link to that video up here and as I say next time you come to me we'll be shooting from that location with that Nikon camera and hopefully we'll start to get some decent images but yeah, in the meantime, if you can look, set, look at setting something similar up on your back garden, if that's where you want to do it, um, look at a few of my videos on doing that. As I say, I've put the links and I'll put the links in the description below. And uh, I'll see you later on. Right, so that's it for this video. Got you to a stage where you know what equipment I'm using. Uh, we're going to start with garden birds. As I say, you know, just imagine this is set up on my garden. The only reason I haven't done it there is because of the noise of the road. It's absolutely awful. It's a little bit quieter here. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As I say, it's the first of a series. If you follow this throughout the year, hopefully it'll improve your wildlife photography or at least give you a start in wildlife photography and find out whether you're going to enjoy it or not. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you'll stick with it with me. And I'll see you in probably about three or four weeks when hopefully we'll have some shots and some video from this hide. If you've enjoyed this video, then as always, please subscribe to the channel. It really does help. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Cheers, bye. Thank you.